morning, church. Today's scripture reading um, comes from Matthew 13, um, verses 1 to 9, and verses 18 to 23. I will be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, at the end of the reading, I will say this is the word of the Lord, and the church can respond by saying praise be to God. It reads as follows. The parable of the sower. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down while the whole crowd stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, Consider the shower, consider the sower who went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell among the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and it grew up quickly since the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it. Still, other seed fell on good ground and produced fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times what was sown. Let anyone who has ears listen. Verses 18 to 23. The parable of the sower explained. So listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of, of when anyone hears the word about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one sown along the path, and the one sown on rocky ground. This is one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, but he has no root and is short-lived. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he falls away. Now the one sown on the thorns, this one, this one who hears the word, but, wor but worries of the, but the worries of the ages and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown on good ground, this is one who hears and understands the word, who does produce fruit and yields. Some a hundred, some sixty some 30 times what is sown. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. It's phenomenal to see you. I want to ask you a question before we start. Maybe just have a word up on the screen for you. How well do you listen? Are you able to receive words from a sender? Hold it understand it, absorb what it means to you, and then respond to it. Just to be sure that we aren't blinded by our own pride, question, what if I ask that question about you to the person who knows you best? Right, because we might always fall into the trap of going, yeah, 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 I'm a phenomenal listener. But let me ask someone who knows you best. What would they say? Let's be honest, listening is quite challenging for so many reasons that I can't even start mentioning them here today. But here's what I know, two really important things. One, being able to listen to someone is a great way of showing love and empathy towards them. It is a quick win if you want to love people like Jesus calls us to. Ons wil vir mense so lief is, soos wat Jesus vir ons is. Een van die makkelijkste manier om het te doen is, luister na iemand. En luister aandachtig. Here's what I also know about listening. Being able to listen to God's word, to the Holy Spirit inside of us, and to fellow believers helping us in our journey of faith, listen to this, enables the kingdom of God to grow in our lives. Being able to listen enables the kingdom of God to grow in our lives. And we are going to focus on this truth today. Hoe goed jy luister, bepaal hoeveel van die koninkryk jy in jou leven sien. Let me show you. Just look at the key words in this parable and also in the explanation of this parable. Verse 9, let anyone who has ears listen. Verse 18, so listen to the parable of the sower. Verse 19, 
hears and understand. Verse 20, hears and receives. Verse 22, hears but. Verse 23, hears and understands. That's what this parable is all about. The word listen twice, the word hear four times. So once again, how well do you listen? Hoe goed luister jy? Do you listen to God's word, to the Holy Spirit, and to fellow believers helping you in your journey of faith? Jesus says through this parable that our ability to listen is like the soil in which seed is being sown. I'm going to say it once more. Jesus says through this parable that our ability to listen is like the soil in which seed is being sown. Jou vermoe om te luister is soos grond waar in saad val. Now let me sum it all up before I explain it. No soil, no kingdom, period. It's like a path, right? So no soil, no kingdom in your life means stuck and unchanging. Here's the crazy thing about a path. A lot of things will change around the path, but, it's, but the path itself will not because it's hard. You cannot take any seed. You also have rocky soil. In rocky soil, what you see is short-lived kingdom in someone's life. So there's some growth, but there's no root. It was awesome in the beginning, but then it fades. It's short-lived. Thorny soil equals a fading kingdom. Okay? It was beautiful and growing at some point in your life, but now it looks really messy and neglected. And then you get good soil. Sustained, consistent, strong growth. That means if you have good soil, that you can see the fruit and the transformation in someone's life. And as you gaze at it, as you behold it, it leads you to all. That's in summary what this parable says. How well do you listen? Let me show you a picture of your heart. Well, it's not your heart, but it's a really cool picture of a heart. See, brothers and sisters, God's word comes into our lives, listen, through our ears. And then it lands in our hearts. Our heart is the core of our being. In Afrikaans, jou binneste. Waar sit jou binneste? Ek weet nie, maar ek weet waar het is. Het is binne. Right? The core of your being. So the word enters through the ear and then it settles in the heart. The heart being the place where our whole life originates. Not only through the pumping of blood through all your organs and veins, but that's where our desires come from. Ne? Ons begeertes. Our emotions. Our convictions. In Afrikaans, jou oortuigings. Our moods. Our discernment, right? The fact that we know, in Afrikaans, onderscheiding. It all comes from the heart. I mean, we use words like gut feeling, right? My gut says. Ek krij die gevoel in my binneste. We know that we have a heart, and we know that that is where our whole life originates. Now that is where the soil is. And we need to guard that. Ons moet ons harte bewaak. We need to tend to our hearts. We need to nurture our hearts. We need to steward our hearts as if it is soil. We need to make sure in our hearts that it is good and fertile and moist and ready to produce fruit. That means putting good stuff into your heart, which will enter through your ear, and getting bad stuff out of your heart, which will exit through your mouth, and then guarding it and making sure that your heart is ready to produce fruit. Now, as we work through the four soils mentioned in this parable and the interpretation that Jesus gives, 
I want to ask you four questions. So let me put that up for you. And once again, as we convert from Google Slides to PowerPoint, it changes the numbering. Okay, so question one, 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 and one, which is actually question one, two, three, and four. Is your heart hard? Is your heart turned towards your needs and desires? Is your heart divided? Is your heart pure and open to receive seed? Let's tackle them one by one. Is your heart hard? I'll show you a picture of a path. I mean, it's a nice picture, but look at the path. It's really hard. There's no soil there. It's unchanging. Do you know when your heart's hard, you say stuff like, I am who I am. I will not change. So gemaak and so gelat staan, we say in Afrikaans. You are resistant to truth. If your heart is hard, you are not open to whoever says whatever. On the contrary, a person with a hard heart would hear something someone says to them and then answer back with, let me tell you how it is. That's a hard heart. Here's the truth. If you have a hard heart, you will not see God's kingdom grow in your life. You will grow absolutely no fruit in your life. And let me speak truth to you this morning. If your heart is hard, you will waste the very life God has given you to glorify Him. Because your heart is hard. Jesus says in verse 19, look at it in your text, whichever translation you're reading from, either Afrikaans or English. Here's the words about the kingdom and doesn't understand it. If you sit in a service and you hear a sermon and it does nothing to you, your heart is hard. If you hear a message over the radio, if you receive a WhatsApp from a friend, if you open up the Bible and you read it and it does nothing to you, you have a hard heart. Can I tell you what causes this? Pain. Disappointment, prejudice, in Afrikaans, vooroordele, anger, we spoke about this last week, bitterness, rejection, unforgiveness, secrets, lies, that will make your heart hard. Question. Do you have any of this in your heart? Because if you do, and you're aware of it today, don't let this moment slip. Because that's the truth illuminating something inside of you. Let's look at the second one. Is your heart turned towards your desires, uh, your needs and desires? See, when you hear the good news, right? A message of love and forgiveness, salvation, everlasting life, acceptance, adoption, you absolutely receive it, right? Why? Because it's good news. It's good news and you want it. But then, as soon as the transformation work through the Holy Spirit starts in you, to form you into the image of Christ, then you become resistant to it. And the love of God and his word can't take root in your life. Why? Because that's when it gets hard to be faithful to him and to die to yourself. That's when you don't get what you want anymore. And then you fall away. See, that's a problem. Because that's a rocky heart. That's a heart that's full of rocky soil. I mean, you love hearing the good news and you want the good news. And it's great to be loved and to be adopted. 
But then as soon as the gospel asks something of me, as soon as uh, I can't just walk up to God and say a prayer like an ATM and then he gives me the solution, that's when I start falling away. Look how Jesus frames it in verse 21. When distress or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. Do you know what causes this in our hearts? Disappointment, again. But then also regret. Also our desires and our passions. Ons begeertes, dit wat ons so graag wil hee. The things we covet cause us to have rocky soil in our hearts. Fear, fear is a big one. Why? Because I want to control things. And if I can't control things, I'm scared. So I would rather control things and do it on my terms than listen to God and submit under his word. That's rocky soil. It'll grow, but it'll wilt. Failure. Failure is never a great feeling. But failure causes rocky soil in our hearts. Because when we fail and we believe that we are failures, then we fall away. Embarrassment can cause rocky soil in our hearts because it takes away our courage to try again. Do you have any of this in your heart? Don't let the moment pass. Let's look at the third one. Is your heart divided? Let me ask you a simple question. Do you want one thing? One thing. Do you want one thing? Because an undivided heart, listen to this, is a heart that wills one thing. That's an undivided heart. A heart that wills and wants one thing. The Westminster Confession has a question and answer. The Afrikaans folk might remember the Dordse Leerels, Nederlandse Geloosbeleidnis, nee, Heidelbergs Catechismus. The first question in the Westminster Confession is, what is the chief end of man? Why are we here? And here's the answer. To glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That's it. One thing. Is that what you want? Because if that is not all that you desire, your heart will be divided. The word will land in your heart, it will grow in your heart, but it will grow among other things. See, that's the problem. And in the end, it will be smothered and drained of its life. It will be smothered and it won't bear fruit. It will lose its vitality. Jesus says in verse 22, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries, the worries of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Do you know what causes this? The seduction of wealth and things in your life. Believing that what you have and what you want to acquire will satisfy you. It will never satisfy you. If you bank on wealth and stuff to satisfy you, you will forever want more. Because it can't fully and finally satisfy you. Distorted pictures of ourselves, distorted pictures of yourself in your heart causes thorny soil. I just can't believe that God loves me. So the truth comes into my ears, it lands in my heart, but I struggle with who I am and therefore I just cannot believe this truth that just entered my ear. Trauma causes thorny soil, things that happen to us that we don't expect to anticipate but it hurts us. The worries of life causes thorny soil. And let's be honest, fam, you cannot do anything about the things that you are worried about. But somehow, because we're surrounded by bad news more than good news and sometimes even fake news, we believe this and it grows stuff in our lives that kills the fruit in our lives. You guys know what doom scrolling is? You keep on reading the same bad news because it just keeps on popping up in your news feed. Oh, look at it now. Oh, look at it now. Oh, it's all lost. It's all broken. Do you realize you can't do anything about it? 
but you worried sick. Which means that when the truth enters your ears and it lands in your heart, it grows among other things. And you won't be fruitful. The quality of your relationships, the hurt you receive from your relationships causes thorny soil, guilt, shame, lies. All of those things in our hearts will drain the life out of you if it stays there. Do you have any of this in your heart? Last one, is your heart pure and open to receive seed? And even though I got that picture on the interwebs, I made sure that it's a picture from South Africa. Look at it! What a beaut. What a beaut of a garden. Did you hear the truth about who you are in light of the gospel and do you build your life on that truth? Because if you do, your heart is pure and open to receive seed. Then you've got good soil in your heart. I'm going to ask the question again. Did you hear the truth about who you are in light of the gospel? And do you build your life on that truth? Listen. Listen now. Listen. Because of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and his resurrection from the dead, you are forgiven of your sins. You are adopted into God's family as one of his children. It's done. You are deemed or seen to be pure and blameless and in right standing with the one who created you. Because of the death of Jesus and his resurrection, you are destined to live forever. And that starts now and it goes all the way into eternity. Because of the gospel, you are co-heir with Christ and you will receive all he has promised. Whatever you gather on earth will stay. But when you enter into eternity, you will receive all of what he has. Because we co-heirs with him. You are loved. Listen, God loves you because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You are welcomed regardless of who you are and where you've been. The heavens rejoiced about you the day that you confessed your faith in Jesus Christ and came to faith. Do you realize that? Reino just came to faith. Woo! Worship songs, high fives all around, heel clicks, air punches. Why? Because Jesus died for him. And therefore the heavens rejoiced. You are redeemed. You get a second chance and a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth into infinity. Our youngest child says, Ontelbar, duizend miljoen ontelbar. Like that many chances. You are renewed. You are made new. You are set free from all the things we mentioned in the first three soils. Why? Because Jesus died for this. And if you want this, he never ever says no. Never. He always says yes. Because he made a way for you. Do you know how we keep our hearts full of good soil? Truth, this is the truth. Trust, like trusting God. Believing Him. Trusting that He'll keep His word. Trusting Him, like as a person. Trusting His character. Faith, right? Believing without seeing, that's how we keep good soil. And then repentance. Turning when we are convicted of our sin, turning away from one way, headed into a new direction. Repentance. I was at a conference this week in which the speaker said, a pastor of a church should be the repenter in chief. That's it, that's all you do. Show people how to turn away from sin and how to follow Jesus Christ. That's what you need to do. It's a phenomenal moment for me. 
Guarding our hearts means ripping out the former things and working in the latter things and then guarding our hearts with our whole beings. Then we will produce manifold fruit. And what a beautiful and God-glorifying sight it will be if our lives look like that picture. Jesus says in verse 23, this is the one who hears and understands the word who does produce fruit and it yields. We need to respond to this word, brothers and sisters, as we get ready for what God wants to do in us. For Pierre van Reineveld, for this week of Pentecost, and for Fellowship City through this series that we call Deeper. And to do that, I just want to leave you with two pictures. This is a before picture of our backyard in our previous house. This is the after picture of that same backyard. You'll see the lawnmower to the left. It was before the first cut. We had to take it all out that was there. A graf, a gr no, no, graf, 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 a graf diepte, ne? the depth of a shovel. We had to work extremely hard to get everything out. And then we had to get work really hard to get it ready. New soil, new fertilizer, new seed. And then we had to tend, we had to water, and we had to wait. But let me tell you, it was worth it. After that first cut, when I saw the kids running around on the lawn, I was like, yes, yes, I'm so glad we did it. Let me tell you the truth, and I'll end with this. Dealing with these things in your own heart is worth it. Do it today. Ask God to pour his love into your ears again and to let it grow mightily in the soil of your hearts. Let's read a scripture. Psalm 86 verse 11 in English and in Afrikaans. This is your prayer to deal with this stuff. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. O school, 1953 vertalen. Waarom? Leer my jere i weg. Ek sal in i waarheid wandel. Verenig my hart tot die vrees van i naam. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, your truth has entered our lives through our ears this morning and we know that it landed in our hearts. Lord Jesus, our desire is to have good soil for that seed to grow in. Our desire is to produce and yield much fruit. Our desire is to glorify you and to enjoy you forever. And Lord Jesus, you know that there are so many things competing with everything that I just said. I want to pray this morning, Lord Jesus, that you would do deep surgery in our hearts. That you would weed out take out, rip out the things that's causing our hearts to be full of either hard, rocky or thorny soil and make us new again. Lord Jesus, you can make a heart of stone into a heart of flesh and you paid with your life to do that in our, uh, in our hearts. May we not be resistant to it this morning, Lord Jesus. Do something new in us liberate us from these things and then help us to guard our hearts with our whole lives so that we can bear much fruit so that your name can be glorified. I pray that in your name, Lord Jesus, knowing your love, tasting your love, seeing your love earlier in the bread and the wine. Amen. Amen.